Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are taking our very first look at the brand new Tier 7 American Premium Battleship Azure Lane, New Jersey. And with that being said, let's get into our commander. We're actually running the Azure Lane, New Jersey ch Commander. High note, crazy thought. But uh, I'll explain why as we get into it. So first of all, we have Azure Lane Sharnhorst and we have Arthas the Cold as our inspiration. I know I changed it up a little bit on you guys, but I'll explain why. So Arthas actually increases your damage by 20% while your catapult fighter is up. So I'm trying to stack as much damage as possible into a single salvo. That's basically the goal of this particular build. So keep that in mind. This is not the min-max build that of the of the century, but it is a nice little little change from what I normally do to uh, give ourselves, you know, the kind of the best possible chance at doing as much damage as possible every time we pull the trigger. Now, with that being said, our commander perks, we got Flamble Cannoneer, Gyrating Drill Bits, Firefighter, which actually takes away all of the negatives from this, and then some. See, we have a plus 13% chance to catch fire here, right? Well, here we have a minus 15% chance to catch fire, so there's that. The only downside here is that it does reduce your damage control party duration. Um, I'm not a big fan of that, but it's not as bad as the, um, what is that other one? There's another one, Emergency Specialist. It's not as bad as Emergency Specialist. Emergency Specialist reduced it by 70%. This reduces it by 40 So you still get a little bit of time there of invulnerability without being set on fire or floods. So it's not as bad. But your only other option here is on second thought. And most of the time in my American battleships, I'm not bothering to switch shell types. So it's just the way it is. Uh, and Don't You Just Love It is her special skill. And... Deal more damage with Citadel Strikes, plus 12.5% over your normal damage output. You stack that with the potential for, you know, if it's over 10 kilometers, her base, her, her base trait, main battery shells that travel over 10 kilometers deal extra damage. So if you Citadel something from over 10 kilometers, you're getting multiple boosts to your damage. And if you just happen to have Arthas the Cold and you've got a spotter plane up, you get another 20% of damage on top of that. And you can see where I'm going with this. The damage output potential of a single salvo if you manage to score a Citadel on a broadside target beyond 10 kilometers is pretty freaking disgusting. Keep that in mind. <laughs> Do not play with Azure Lane, New Jersey, uh, or any American battleship at this point that decides to run this perk. And uh, I'm just going to throw this out there. My Montana, my Kansas, might be getting this uh, commander in the very near future. If not, if not for the full commander, at minimum, the base trait. We might be pulling Palo de Revel off to put uh, the base trait on for this to get that extra damage that are that's beyond 10 kilometers. It's it's not insignificant. And when you consider the fact that you're sending 12 rounds downrange with the Montana and the Kansas, you can see why I'm kind of excited about that. All right, so a uh, little, bit, little bit of a caveat, okay? Just a different sort of build than you guys are used to. You know you can run the normal William Sims dispersion build all day if you want and just have another Iowa that's slightly less, less HP pool and slightly, uh, you know, slight, I say slightly more accurate. It is not noticeably more accurate. I will put it that way. So keep that in mind. You will not notice the difference between an Iowa and a New Jersey's accuracy. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've had a lot of troll salvos with the New Jersey already, but I've had some absolutely ridiculous games already, including the one that you guys are going to see. Uh, so hopefully you guys are ready. It's going to be a juicy one, I promise. So how do we have this thing equipped? Well, we've got main battery mod two in the first slot. We've got Rudder shift time, so steering gears mod 2 in the second slot. It's you almost a requirement to run steering gears on an Iowa. I'm sorry, it just is. You need to be able to turn these things. You have to. Okay, so keep that in mind. Concealment system mod obviously gets us down to a 13.2 concealment. And then we are obviously running artillery plotting room mod 2. Now, I don't have any of the legendary commander or legendary modifications yet. So these are just your base modifications. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now... We are running the uh, Italian Unity flag because, you know, if you hold your tongue in the right 
just right. It kind of it looks like a Spartan helmet, even though we all know it's not. It's a it's a Roman helmet, but still. Uh, we're also running the, the premium camo that comes with the ship, which I actually quite enjoy, but we'll go over that in a minute. We are also running the Epic Battle Booster. I'm going to pull that off for the uh, for the whole purpose of the stats for you guys so you can see what you're working with. But uh, survivability, just 67,000 hit points. Uh, I believe that Iowa starts with uh, 71 or 72,000 hit points. I, I don't remember exactly. So uh, a significant drop in hit points from the Iowa. Uh, but same torpedo damage reduction, 25%. Um, artillery, you've got 406 millimeter Mark 7 guns. These are the 50 caliber American guns firing the 2,700 pound super heavy American armor piercing rounds that you, you just know and you love. All right, now look at the range on this thing. 19.5 kilometers is solid. You put the epic battle booster on this thing, you're shooting out to 20.1 kilometers. That's nasty. You don't usually need that kind of range, but it's nice to have in your back pocket for a rainy day. Reload time, 31 seconds. That is the uh, downside. We're not running Palo de Rebel, so we have a uh, slightly slower reload than the base Iowa, and we don't have that extra boost to our reload, so not ideal. But what we do have is 180 degree turn time of less than 30 seconds on a battleship, which is pretty nice, 28.6 seconds. HE shell maximum damage 5700 with a 36% chance to set fire. Nothing out of the ordinary there. AP shell maximum damage before any perks get added to this thing is 14,410, which is the original Iowa AP shell damage. I believe that is what you see on uh, Missouri. So if we look, am I correct? No, actually, I lied. So 14,410 is the Iowa's post-nerf. AP shell damage. So Missouri is the only one that gets the pre-nerf version of the Iowa AP damage, which is a little unfortunate to be honest. I mean, the whole purpose of this thing is that extra damage stacking ability. So I would love to have seen them at you know keep it with that 14th, you know, the same as the uh, the Missouri in that that regard. All right, so let's get back into the stats. Um, You've got the same 127 millimeter Mark 32 secondaries. You guys know how it is. Dual purpose, 10, uh, 10 times two, so you get 20 of them, 10 on either side of the ship. Uh, they fire out to five kilometers, reload six seconds. HE shells maximum damage 1800 with a 5% chance to set fires. It's the American secondaries. It's the five inch 38. Um, it, it's a very good, good secondary, but short range for this game because reasons. Um, AA defense is only 93 because we do not run the AA mod on this particular ship. Uh, if you run the AA mod, this goes straight up to 100 all day, every day. 20 millimeter Orlick and Mark 20s, you get 64 of those doing 195 damage per second, reaching out to just two kilometers. 40 millimeter Bofors Mark II, you get uh, 19 times four, that would be 80 minus four, which would be 76. <laughs> 76 of those doing 302 damage per second and 3.5 kilometers. I know, I just did math live right there for you guys. In my head, that's how that works. 127 millimeter Mark 32s, you get 20 of those doing 151 damage per second, five kilometer firing range. So you've got one slightly standoffish, and then the rest of it is close in air support. So you're not going to be shooting things down until it gets on top of you and drops its ordnance, and then suddenly they'll just start dropping like flies. It's just how it works. Maneuverability, maximum speed 27 knots because we are running the gyrating drill bits. If you didn't run gyrating drill bits, you'd be running roughly uh, 30 knots, I believe, is the base speed of the Iowa's. Even though in real life they did 33 knots. Just saying, Wargaming, fix it. Why can't we have 33 knot Iowas? Huh? Huh? 920 meter turning circle. So the turning circle is actually slightly worse on the New Jersey than it is on the Iowa. Iowa has a 910 meter turning circle. And the Iowa's rudder shift after the, uh, the steering gears is on should be like 14.2. This is 15.6. So if we look at our Iowa... No, I guess it's 16.6 still. What? Okay. And I guess it's 9... Did they nerf the... When did this happen? I could have swore that the Iowa had a 910 meter turning circle and that with steering gears on, it dropped it to like a 14.2 er, rudder shift. Maybe I'm getting rudder shift and concealment mixed up, but, I, it, you know, things happen. But anyway, back to the New Jersey. I promise we'll get through this. Um, anyway, concealment. 13.2 kilometers by sea with the concealment mod, 11.1 by air, two is always guaranteed, and the 14.8 kilometer smoke firing penalty. 
Armor, it's in Iowa. It's got great armor everywhere except its superstructure, which is absolutely ridiculously um, healthy. Like, you guys know it by now. I've said it a million times. American and German battleships with their massive superstructures have a lot of hit points allocated to the superstructure, so you can get chunked repeatedly over and over and over again uh, and just keep sh just bleeding health. Uh, but other than that, it's got very good armor pretty much everywhere uh, except right there. But that's not to, not to say that there isn't a belt underneath it. But that is extra. Okay, so you have 20, 25 millimeters of side plating on top of the extra that you get. Now let's take a look. The Citadel, get rid of the guns. The Citadel is at the waterline and slightly below, so this thing up close is actually somewhat difficult to Citadel. It's not impossible, and if you make any sort of turn towards whoever's shooting at you, you raise that Citadel even slightly, you're going to get blapped. Um, as always, bow side plating, if you guys get a chance, if you're coming around an island or if they're coming around an island, you get to shoot through that bow side plating into that citadel. Much easier to citadel them through there. It's just basic, basic gunnery for this game. By now, you guys should know that. But as you can see, it's not a turtle back at all. It's just an extra layer of, uh, it's an armored deck, essentially. Uh, but it is a nice little extra belt as well. So you can, you can bounce a lot of shells or... You'll take penetrations from the outside, but not necessarily from the inside. So they won't necessarily do any damage. So it, it's pretty nice. I love my Iowa, as you guys know this. I'm kind of biased, so uh, let's take a look at it. Long reach, above average main battery range. That is true. Hit them before they can hit you. At tier 7, I believe it has the longest range of any battleship in the game currently. Uh, now, obviously, tier 6, the Sharnhorst, I believe, can outdo that. And I think there's a couple of cruisers that are at least arguing with that with their perks if they build for it. But this thing is fully capable of reaching out over 21 knots, or 21 kilometers, I believe, if you build solely for range. Uh, and that includes adding extra range with like Megatron Commander and stuff like that. You could definitely get these over 21 kilometers. Um, would recommend it. It's, it's not useful range, in my opinion. But uh, there is that. Fast, above average ma maximum movement speed. I would say it's average because, unfortunately, in this game, they don't give the Iowas their world record speed. They were the fastest battleships ever built, Wargaming. Why is it that we have so many battleships in the game that outrun them? But, you know, I digress. Big guns. The ship is armed with high caliber main battery guns. They're 16 inch guns. You guys know how it is at tier 7. Um, I love my 16 inch guns. Y'all know this. Azure Lane, New Jersey. The design of this ship is based on the New Jersey character from Azure Lane. She's the unbeatable black dragon of the Eagle Union. Now, while that is all well and good, Wargaming, that's fine. You can have that in there all you want. Put us a little bit of a descriptor. New Jersey, the vessel itself, the most decorated battleship in American history. Process this. The most decorated battleship in American history. Can't we get a little bit of a, a history, a little, little bit of a tidbit down here in the bottom? Just a little bit. But anyway, she entered service in 1943. There were six of them in the series, but as we all know, four of them were built. You have Iowa, Missouri, well, Iowa, New Jersey, if you want to go in chronological orders, Iowa, New Jersey, Missouri, and of course, the um, Wisconsin. So if you guys know the other two, I, I know we do this every time, but if you know the other two battleships, leave it down in the comments below. The first person to get it correct, I will pin you, okay? So with that being said, let's take a look at this beautiful ship. I right? look at this thing. Look at the, I love this camo, by the way. I'm not going to lie. A lot of these Azure Lane camos, a lot of these, like, Mimi camos, I don't really get along with. This thing's pretty sick. I'm not going to lie. It's nice. It's not overly done. I do like it. It's it's pretty, pretty smooth. I ain't going to lie. It's pretty nice. I'm glad that they didn't go crazy with it. Like, uh, my, oh, look, it's got a play button on it, guys. Look, it's got a play button. It's like they knew that I was going to put this in the game. Or I was going to put this on my channel. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let's just keep her going, man. I mean, it's a, it's a good-looking ship. Also, if you guys didn't know better, see this see this secondary turret right here? This one right here? I can't remember if it was this one or if it was, like, this one up. No, because this one would have been uh, replaced. I think it was, yeah, I think it was this one right here. I fired on on the actual New Jersey. I got to fire one of these five-inch guns from the the uh, secondary right there. 
on the on the New Jersey itself. So if you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link down in the uh, comments section to my playlist where I actually fire the five inch gun for you guys if you guys are looking forward to seeing that. But uh, with all of that being said, let me just get it over with. Y'all know how it is. Let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we're going to be on Northern Waters and we are in Azure Lane, New Jersey. Now, let's just go ahead and get the, the formalities out the way right off the bat. Do I think that you should go out and spend a whole bunch of money for this? No, I don't. I think that if you want an Iowa class battleship, your best bet is to just grind through the tech tree and unlock the Iowa the old fashioned way. However, if you're a collector like I am, I like to collect specifically Iowa class battleships and hopefully one day Wisconsin will make an appearance in the game so I can have the entire set. Uh, but, but for now, we have all three that are currently in the game. We have Iowa, we have New Jersey, and we have Missouri. But uh, New Jersey is definitely uh, uh, going to hold a special place in my heart, even though I prefer, I, I love the Iowa, my first, my first true love in the game. But uh, New Jersey being able to, you know, I've also been on Wisconsin, but New Jersey being able to actually set foot on the deck, walk through and have a, a ridiculously awesome time with Ryan Szymanski, the curator of the Battleship New Jersey Museum and YouTube channel. Um, doing that and then firing the five inch gun and being there while they're firing off the saluting cannons and stuff like that. It's an experience that you just can't replace. You know what I'm saying? So yes, New Jersey is officially my new favorite battleship in the game. Wait, what? Well, I got to buy this thing now. No, 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 no. It's sentimental guys. You are not going to notice any difference between this and the Iowa. You're just not, other than la less hit points. <laughs> but I promise, it's not worth the the money if you already have the Iowa. Now, if you're a collector, by all means, go for it. Um, the commander, is she worth it? Um, honestly, I'm kind of on the fence. I like the the difference. I like that they're reaching out and they're, they're doing different things with, with um, you know, increasing, making different builds for for the same ships and stuff you know what i'm saying like giving us differences that we can actually like go out and have something completely different so for like iowa missouri we go full dispersion build on this thing we go with the meme build for the damage the just absolute power broadside it works or it doesn't you know what i'm saying uh, and it's okay i'm happy with that but uh here we actually take it dude i miss misled this guy so much i expected him to slow down he didn't slow down and these faster shells are great don't get me wrong that was the other thing i, I forgot to tell you guys these actually have a faster shell velocity than the stock iowa again i don't really notice it a lot to be honest i haven't really had to adjust my my firing arcs or firing leads or anything like that too much um it doesn't feel like it's substantially faster to me, but that's just, you know, my personal experience. You guys know it's early on. We'll see how it goes down the road. But here we take a shot at the Edinburgh. We know we don't overmatch him, so we aim superstructure and we, we punish him. We punish him. Remember, anything over 10 kilometers gets extra damage. So every one of those shells that hit got a little bit extra extra damage on it. So you can see how, how nice that is. And look at him just heal it all back because he's a freaking British super heal. God dang it. But uh, it's okay. We'll get him eventually. Uh, we're going to try not to get blapped here. He There's no destroyers in this match. So that, there's that. So the only one that's really going to be spot. Oh my God. They failed division to freaking New Mexico. Okay. Well, let's see how that works out for him, shall we? Welcome to tier seven, buddy. How are you? Here's a full broadside from one of the nastiest battleships you're ever going to run into. Bunk. <laughs> we just doubled our damage output. <laughs> Literally hit that man for over 20,000 damage in that shot. Then Edinburgh comes out and he's like, you know what? I think I will. I think I will go out here. Uh, we managed to turn away. And that's, again, one of those perfect things that I, I talk about with why I like to have steering gears. Now here, Edinburgh... This guy, despite what it appears to be, makes the right choice here. He outruns a smoke screen. I had played perfectly for him to slow down and stop trying to stay in that smoke screen. So the fact that he kept going, he avoids getting dev struck right there. I would have 100% dev struck him right there. But for now, he gets away. 
and he's about to go behind an island before I can get loaded, so unfortunately, he goes dark. Why? Because we're the only one spotting anything, okay? We are literally the only spotter on this side of the map. We have an Atlanta, and we have a Vladivostok, and our Vladivostok, even though it has all the armor in the world, is scared to use any of it. He doesn't want to scratch his paint, guys. Now here, Edinburgh comes out again, like, come on, dude. How many times are you going to give me a chance? That's all I'm saying. I have a I have a fighter plane ready. We go ahead and take the shot. I don't use the fighter right away because I wanted to wait to see if it was going to be a good one. And then I forgot to use it. And that would have been a kill and a dev strike for me had I actually used the fighter plane. Big dumb. So, it's one of those things, I've got to get used to it. It's the first time I've ever done this. And by the way, I did not come up with this idea, okay? The first person I saw using this particular uh, commander to do this was none other than... I don't know if he's still a CC. He was definitely, he used to be a CC. But Chili Games. I'll leave a link to his channel down in the description below if he decides to start producing content again for World of Warships Legends, you guys might enjoy it. He's an amazing player, way better than I am, but uh, he's one of those really, really um, technical players. And so he goes through and he min-maxes the crap out of his builds and like he's just very good at what he does. Me, you guys know I'm an entertainer first. Like, that's what I do. I go out here and I make make loud noises and make you guys giggle. That's that's my goal. Speaking of loud noises and giggling, how many times can you sail broadside in a synop in front of any American battleship and get away with it? Pow! <laughs> One too many, apparently. But, uh, yeah. There's that beautiful, beautiful accuracy that we love out of Iowa-class battleships. And like I said, that's not going to be any better or any worse than what you get out of the regular Iowa or the Missouri. If you guys have either of those, then you'll be fine. You don't need this ship. You might want to grab the commander because it's a unique commander that has some interesting skills and her base trait actually would be useful on other battleships uh, or potentially anything because it's not a battleship specific skill. Now here we punch right through the bow of the, uh, the New Mexico. Atlanta finishes him off. We're moving forward. We're going to try to uh, get around this Missouri here. These guys are in trouble. They are not used to seeing an Iowa-class battleship use the flanks and push up the way I am. This is not. This is how I play, man. I win my side. I go for the crossfires. If my team ain't going to move, I'll be the one to move, and I'll make sure that we get a crossfire set up one way or the other. You can't bow tank us all. Now we take a shot into the Missouri superstructure and there's a perfect example. Five full pins with just the front guns. That is five out of six shells landing in the superstructure and absolutely massive, just smashing it. And it was beyond 10 kilometers, so we get a little bit of extra damage there. Do you see how it can stack up? Especially, you know, early game. If you catch people broadside early game, oh my God, you can absolutely ruin them with this thing, especially with this build. But, uh, yeah, here we take another shot at the superstructure. There's another over 11,000 damage. I mean, it's just, it's so consistent. That's what I love about my American battleships, and more specifically, Kansas, Iowa's, and Montana. Like, they are, oh my god, they are so good. I love them. But uh, Champagne decides, you know what, anything anybody else can do, I can do better. With a raised citadel the size of Kansas. Well... Let's see how that works out for you. Now, it, unfortunately, he doesn't have enough health for this to be a dev strike. But it doesn't matter because we're still going to blap the crap out of him and get our Confederate and another Citadel. So we're up to four Citadels in this match. And we have a High Cow, a dev strike, and a Confederate. That's pretty solid work. Now, this Missouri at this point, he's like, nah. Now, I've seen how this goes. I'm not playing this game. I need to get out of here. I'll go, I'd, I'd rather take my chances against the Vladivostok than this New Jersey right now. This New Jersey is absolutely dominating. I don't want this in my life. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a choice. Now, here I'm going to try to use the camera to see if I can look around the island. W wait for it. There it is. Now, I'm switching to the front gun. There you go. Unfortunately, he's turning out, so I, I hold my fire. No reason to waste the shot into the island. We're going to hold our shot. Wait for an opportunity, and here's where I should have once again used my freaking catapult fighter to increase my damage, because if I had, he dies. But I didn't, so he doesn't. But we just hit him with all nine shells. Only one of them didn't do damage. Nine shells sent down range, nine shells hitting. Eight of them landed in the superstructure and did enough damage to leave him just enough to get away. 185,000 damage done. Con Confederate, high cow, dev strike, top of leaderboard, 2600 base XP. 
not too shabby. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are you looking forward to New Jersey? Do you think it's just overpriced bullcrap? Let us know. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.